Welcome to Rogue Trader. Please read the disclaimer and remember that prices can go down as well as up. 888 Holdings. So I looked at these as a defensive Corona pick. So this could be a stock which isn't affected by the lockdown. And if there's economic troubles ahead, will be relatively unaffected. And gambling companies are considered defensive stocks which which have revenues that aren't really affected in economic downturns. So 888 Holdings, a online gambling company, all of their sales are by selling gambling games or by people playing gambling games on the internet. They make money from people gambling online, mainly in the US and Europe. The main markets are Europe with 41% of total revenues and the UK with 37%. They sell casino products, which is the main bulk of their revenues at 64%, poker, bingo, and sport betting. And um, they also have this business to business revenue stream. And uh, that's where they've got their own platforms for gambling, which they sell, let other people use in return for a percent percentage of their revenues. But that's only 5% of their total revenues. You can see here um, that the revenue for casino has a nice trend going up. And uh, from 2014 through to 2019, and that's the vast majority of their revenues. Everything else is kind of a bit wimpish and um, fading away in profits, really, with the exception of the sport, which is um, has been gradually increasing over time to uh, from around 50 to now around 100 million a year. So they've. I went. I had a look at their annual report and stuff, and they've, their business model is pretty simple, and I've, I've uh, illustrated it here. So they obviously the first step is marketing, which is online advertising mainly, um, and they do stuff like they sponsor poker tournaments and stuff like that as well for marketing. They then acquire customers. And um, it might be they first of all sign up with a free account to check it out. But that's the, the second then important point. Then getting customers to actually make deposits. And I know that sometimes they do stuff like um, sign up with $50 and we'll give you $50 free betting and this kind of thing. But getting people to uh, make deposits and then the next thing is keeping the customers through having very competitive software and flashy games. Um, and then finally, uh, then is the gaming revenue that they generate from their customers. And so obviously, all the time there's people dropping off and giving up gambling. So they have to continually feed this chain um, with marketing and continually gain new customers. And um, they've actually uh, been suffering a bit recently in their profits. And the main reasons for that that they've given in their last annual report was the tighter regulation and increased competition. So when I look at them over the last five years, there was a very nice steady trend there going up in their share price. And... Um, what happened was, was in 2018, there was a 16% decrease in UK revenue because there was new regulations in place. And I've seen this with some other gambling stocks I've been looking at. So there was a ban on advertising, which was self-imposed by the industry because they knew they were going to be forced into it anyway. And um, there was also some things like they banned people being able to pay credit their gambling accounts using credit cards so this had then had a big effect on their revenues and then you can see the share price drop they in 2018 they took over 
this company or American Poker Network because obviously they were trying to replace these losses by moving into America. Um, then, no doubt, as a result of this performance in share price, um, they they found themselves with a new CEO. It's I Pazner, and in 2019, there were um, several things that happened. So one thing is the they'd moved into the U.S. because of changes in the law, um, certain acts ban banning gambling had been repealed. And um, what happened though, um, there was this uh, challenge by some parts of the, uh, the US government and legal system where there was a challenge to the interpretation of the Wire Act 1961. So whereas they thought, yet yeah, we can go full into the US, now it's not quite so clear um, and so that's just something that's happened um, in 2019. They bought uh, a portfolio of bingo brands and they bought some uh, sports booking technology off a company based in Ireland called uh, Deadsert Limited for 15 million. So they're, you know, they're trying to overcome the reduction in revenue through the the problems the government's created um, by sprucing up their sports betting and bingo products. Then uh, just in 2020, um, we had their 2019 report out and there was a 26 million dent in profits. And this 26 million dent in prof profits was blamed on a couple of factors. Um, one in the profit and loss, you see it here. Um, one was the increase in gaming duties, particularly in the UK. And the other is higher operating expenses, which they've said is because they were expanding on their casino and sport products. So overall in 2019, um, even though they've got a, a really nice revenue is always increasing, their, their operation profit, operating profit dropped to 52 million and net income 42 million. And so this sort of explains why investors were a bit disconcerted. And then we had the, the Wuhan virus came in, in um, just recently and you can see the, the share price dropped quite considerably along with all the other stocks. But um, this is a defensive stock and uh, it's, there's been a rebound and it's uh, doing okay in the rebound. So looking at the profit and loss, I'm very, very pleased when I looked at this, um, the trend that even despite the problems they're having in 2019, they're still keeping income and revenue rolling up nicely. The, obviously, the expenditure we've got the problem of because of these new, you know, they're still getting the customers, still getting the money in, but now their operating costs are higher because they're having to spend more money to compete with the competition in the operating expenses and they have to pay higher gam gambling uh, duties. So it's kind of, you know, a bit of a, a bit of a mixed picture here. Um, yet yeah, this is a great trend, but we're in a new new times of lower revenues because of the increased taxes and increased uh, competition. So when we look at these graphically, um, you can see the net income. You could see how there were widening. Um, there, there was a, a widening occurring between net income and expenditure. And unfortunately, that gap's been closed by the uh, the new increased regulations. Um, you can see, I've already mentioned before, how casinos going great guns, sport okay, everything else dwindling away. But really, most of their revenue is dominated by casino. And I suppose there's not, you know, there's increase in UK revenues. I mean, they've actually managed to get their UK revenues back up now to where they were in 2017, despite the dip due to not because of the re uh, restrictions they had. So it's kind of fairly impressive. I mean, they're 
I think they're they're taking a good account of themselves. So their assets, um, really, the only thing I could see in their assets worth mentioning was that their cash. Now, one of the great bonuses for these when I first glanced at them was I loved how cash rich, how cash rich they were. But unfortunately, perhaps in response to these troubles they're having, this um, cash pile is starting to dwindle um, down to just about 100 million now. One thing that I also liked about them when I first glanced at them was that they had zero long-term debt and not really that much short-term debt. And um, you can see, you know, it was just amazing, I thought. And then, and then the 2019 update came in and now all of a sudden they're taking in debt. They've got 33 million long term and 30 million short term. So whereas before I was really quite hot on this stock, that these are kind of a little negatives now for me to think about. So in general, I'm quite impressed with 888 in that they're, main, they're managing to keep their revenue and income going. And they've but I've got a kind of, you know, slightly uncomfortable about their the the debt the debt profile now. Um, but um, I guess it's all about the sales now coming to 2020. And only a few weeks ago, they had an update on their sales regarding the COVID-19 crisis. And they actually said that their revenues daily have been boosted 18% during the lockdown period. They also said that the corona damage um, has been to their sports gambling because obviously people can't bet on live sports. But that is only 16% of total revenue. And overall, they're 18% a day up. So um, actually, the when I look at it, the the analysts were expecting 452 million and then 483 million revenues. But I calculated that um, according to their um, their update, you know, let's say, I mean, I think it's highly likely that the uh, this crisis will only last one quarter. And um, if so, this would actually equate to um, them getting 590 million. So that to me then is, you know, a positive thing. It makes me think that kind of nullifies the, um, the problems we have with the lowering profit because it looks like they can make up for that in 2020 and then have kind of more historically normal operating profits and net income. It seems quite reasonable. They said in their latest update and in their 2019 uh, annual report, which was only just released a few days ago, that there's increased momentum with their sales. So, so their, you know, their casino, their casino sales are continuing with this trend. Um, so overall, I'm liking them. I'm liking them. Um, and then, then, however, we have the, the problem of, um, so this is the, the S&P 500, which I've been using as my main indicator of uh, the corona damage on stocks because all the stocks of the world tend to follow the S&P 500. And, um, and basically, the time to have gone in ideally would have been 24th of March when we were at the bottom. And if we're like, and I don't know if we're in a V shape and it's just going to keep on roaring up or it's going to, it's going to dip down again. And um, even defensive stocks will be affected by some extent um, if that happens. So, so I kind of, um, I don't like them enough to want to go in now when we're at these heady heights. In the top right hand corner, you can see 
I've got the progress of the FTSE 100 in cyan against 888 Holdings in black. And 888 Holdings are now actually, the price is the same as it was before the crisis started in mid-February. So I feel like I don't really want to go into them now at these heady highs. But I'd like to track them and and uh, buy them if the price was to drop um, over the you know we don't know what's going to happen generally the rest of the year economically and stuff but i i look at these as a good stock to buy even if we are in troubles economically generally so because given these particularly these kind of little niggles my my plan would be to go in if they if the price dropped to 100 pounds and uh, anything sub 100 pounds then i'll perhaps look in at getting into them and then of course there'll be pretty nice dividends of seven and a half percent so to summarize they are definitely a bona fide corona pick a defensive stock whose sales have been boosted 18 percent by the lockdown and as a gambling company they're not expected to be impacted by a longer term economic damage. The timing is I'm worried that we're in a V shape or if we're not in a V shape, um, it seems like heady highs right now. So I'm going to wait. And if the price drops, then I'll go in, particularly if it drops sub 100. Um, I've got that in this chart area here as well. Um, the finances, if I was to buy them, I'd be looking for their 20% plus revenue growth to uh, continue. And then I'd look for their net, in net income to maintain stable above 50 million. Um, as you can see here, I'd want this, these revenues to keep continue this trend. And I'd want the, uh, the net income to uh, the operating profit to stabilize above 50 million uh, i'd also look at their cash pile and make sure that their cash current cash assets minus their debt doesn't get any worse doesn't start dropping sub 50 million um, i'd also be looking um, it's very important that their casino and sports continue their good trend so i'd want to uh, keep a track on that and look out for these important um, revenue streams uh, reversing i'd look out against them reversing and also if there was any serious new regulatory or tax barriers you i'd also have to reassess so that summarizes my look into 888 Holdings PLC. Generally, I like them, but they're a bit scary in the midst of this big stock rebound we got at the moment. So I'm going to um, take a look at that. And if the price dips, then I'll be interested in buying them.